Hello, everybody, again. It's us. FA We're back. Sama. <laughs> yeah. Back at it again. <laughs> <laughs> to annoy you guys. <laughs> yeah. So today's nice. talk is about, and this is coming from one of our uh, viewers, by the way. How do uh -huh. you scale a Performance Max campaign? Like, what do we do? What are the SOPs? Besides from increasing the budget, of course. <laughs> there are no SOPs. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. So the obvious guess... answer is just increase the budget, and let's talk about that. So, when to increase the budget? Like, what do you wait? Uh, what do you wait for before you increase the budget? So, if you're launching a Pmax campaign, you'll have this arm wrestling. It's so cool. Okay. So, um, when you're in a Pmax campaign, the what you want to look at is okay. Let me start that again. When you launch a Pmax campaign, let it run on its own without touching it for a solid three, four weeks, especially if it's performing. Even if it's underperforming a bit, that's fine. Let it run for three to four weeks. You don't want to touch it at all. That's when you start making changes. The typical, without the most obvious choice to scale a performance max campaign is to straight up increase the budget. But that's also after you let it run for a month is what I like to leave it for um, on average. Easiest option is increase budget. And when do you know to increase budget is when you start seeing consistency in your Pmax campaign. Let's say you're near your goals. Um, even if you're slightly below, it's okay. Just start increasing your budgets around 15 to 20% every two weeks or so if you're scaling. That's the most obvious answer. But okay. with scalability comes problems. The more money you spend, the lower your ROAS comes. How do you maintain that ROAS? There's other ways to increase budget, spend more money while getting the most money out of your campaign. So before increasing the budget, you have to make sure that your performance max is ready to increase the budget. Like it has mm -hmm. a solid TROS. And by the way, uh, do you increase the budget uh, after or before you hit a TROS? Uh, it depends. If I'm it also depends on client budget. Sometimes I can, but if I have control of the budget and I'm hitting my ROAS goals, um, and even if they're slightly below 10, 20% below, I'll start increasing budgets 15, 20% every week, two weeks, depending on how much budget I have. And the reason I say every week or two weeks, it's dependent on how much budget you're spending. If you're spending 40, $50 a day, you probably want to wait two to three weeks to collect enough data to see if you're increasing budget played a part. Let's say you increase from 40 to $50 a week, uh, 50, 40 to $50 a day, wait like two weeks because you're only spending $50. You let it collect data and then make a judgment based off of that to increase budget again. But if you're spending like $100, $200 a day, you're good to just increase budget after every week kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what else? Instead of increasing budget, maybe supplementary campaigns. Like you had some great theories about that. What do you? Why don't you just start yeah. with the supplementary campaign? So another thing, if let's say your P max is running, you're hitting ROAS goals, you're too scared to run budgets. You can launch supplementary campaigns. The easiest ones that are most effective are DSA, which just run a DSA campaign for all your products and let it run wild. Mm -hmm. um, after it collects enough data, yeah, after it collects enough data, let's say you're at like 30, 40 conversions for a month, hit it with a target CPA and it does really well. What you'll see, what you'll expect, and I guess what you should expect is that it'll fluctuate every week. One week you'll do really, really well. Other weeks you'll do kind of bad because it's like going back and forth between the audiences, between Pmax and DSA. So expect that fluctuation with DSA, but it's fairly consistent throughout in terms of getting results. Um, the other thing you can launch is an inbound campaign. Take your search categories, look at your search mm -hmm. categories in your Pmax, whatever your best performance keywords are, uh, toss them in a inbound campaign, a search, a regular search campaign as a broad match, and then slap a target CPA on it. That's not exactly what you want immediately, but a little higher. Okay, maybe like, yeah, not a little higher, a bit higher than what you want, and let it run for maybe twenty percent. And once it yeah, 20 to 30 percent higher than what your goal is, depending on yeah what your goal is. And then wait like two to three weeks before starting to drop that yeah. TCPA because it'll give enough time. Even Don't here, be you're eager. See, like but, the goal is to scale. Yeah. Like if you're hitting, like you're getting a conversion for like twenty five dollars. Don't put a T mm -hmm. uh, 
TCPA for 25. You are you you are aiming to scale. <laughs> you don't mm -hmm. want the you don't want a one hundred dollar uh, campaign to spend like two hundred seventy five dollars a day. Yeah, um, yeah. So if you're aiming to scale, it's exactly what FA said. You don't want to set a limit on it initially. You got to wait for things to play out while that happens. Okay, that was the second campaign. Oh, what was the other one I ran? Oh, the you last too. one you can actually, yeah, the last one you can run if you have good videos, I highly recommend YouTube. It's okay. crazy outbound. It's crazy discovery. It's a crazy discovery campaign for cold traffic. And at some point, when some of that traffic is going to start coming looking for you if you hit correct audiences. And the beauty of it all is you have a Pmax campaign running. And it tells you what audiences are working well for you. It tells you what keywords are working well for you. So just create your PMAC or sorry, your YouTube video around those audiences and those, and you can create custom audiences around those keywords for you to target. So there's no guesswork involved. You're finding the best people to target immediately. That's the, the beauty. Thing, that's the good yeah. thing and the bad thing about Performance Max. Whenever you have a success in a campaign, Performance Max is going to steal that. Use that into your advantages. Use DSA, use Broadmind TCPA, use YouTube campaigns to let Performance Max see a gold mine. Yep. Then it's just, I don't know if, if, if it's the right word for it, but it just abuses those people. Because mm -hmm. in a search campaign, you are targeting the keywords, but in the Performance Max campaign, you are targeting the key person yep. who is searching for that. So there is no escape mm -hmm. from a Performance Max campaign. You got YouTube, yep. Gmail, Display, Discovery, everything yeah and yeah go on so i think i just interrupted you sorry no no that's fine the only thing i was gonna add on to the scalability of your accounts as you're scaling make sure your website is on par with it your workflows are, are on par with it because as you're scaling the amount of cold traffic you're going to be reaching is going to increase significantly you got to be able to convert that traffic which means you got to have it up have email setups, you got to have SMS setups, you got to have remarketing setups, basically anything to bring them back to the website and make sure your website looks yeah. good. Yeah, on, on to that you. website thing, uh, you know, that Performance Max works similar to DSA. So before you run a Performance Max campaign or even just scale it, uh, just copy paste your URL into Keyword Planner and see which <laughs> keywords are you, uh, you are like uh, showing up for. So yeah. maybe even link your search console to your uh, Google Analytics and share that data yeah. to your ads account. So uh, we have an example for that. Our client is just showing up for like two keywords. We just wanted them. We mm -hmm. copy paste the URL and keyword planner and we see that they're only indexing for those keywords. So that yeah. is another limit for your performance management campaign. Yeah, it has to be set up. Like now it's an omni channel. Mm -hmm. Now you have the Facebook elements, the SEO elements. Now you have everything. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Agree. What else? Uh, scale a performance max else? campaign. I think that uh, was it. Oh no. Uh, one more thing. Okay. Like, um, mm -hmm. more asset groups. But oh um, yeah. What to <laughs> what to that. target for? Like I I have an example for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are stuck, like we already shared this in, I think it was the strategy meeting where we all like meet. You have of course all comrades, all visitors in market, but you have unlimited options when it comes to performance max campaign. So just think outside the box. Like we have an example for that. Uh, our client is just selling bikinis. Of course, you have some in-market audiences, affinity audiences for that. But think this way, who would buy a swimsuit? Who would buy a bikini? Of course, uh, somebody who is going to a hotel, somebody who is going to a summer vacation. So there are million yeah. targeting options for people lo looking for like five-star hotels, um, people mm -hmm. who are looking for summer vacations, holidays, like uh, yeah. try to think of the box and try to get to those people when they're in the top of the funnel. Yeah. That I way they, they will be easier, like they will be cheaper, besides easier, mm -hmm. like they will be cheaper, they will be less competition. Uh, yeah. The higher you go up in the sales funnel, the competition mm -hmm. is just uh, lower. Uh, yeah. Can you think of any... Any other example for? Um, no, assets? that's a great example, especially if you're trying to just, you got to think outside the box, like how do who do target, who can you target? And if you don't have that level of imagination and you can't think or like, I don't know who to target, then launch a PMAX and wait for the data to pull in. It will literally tell you 
what audiences are performing well and then use that data or that audience and create asset groups around those. It's super easy to do. What you'll notice is that those audiences that you launch initially aren't always going to stay well or meaning that they aren't always going to perform. Some of them will perform, some of them won't. And the ones that will perform will perform extremely well and eventually exhaust itself. And what you'll kind of start seeing in like a month, month and a half time is that the audiences that you're seeing in Insight will start to cycle out into different ones. So what you do is the ones that are now not performing as well, you swap them out. It's that simple. Just constantly, constantly check your uh, insights, your yep. audience insights, and try to find uh, some more in-market and affinity audiences. I don't, uh, I'm not sure about affinity audiences. I'm just not that close to it. What are your thoughts about that? I like in-market more too. Affinity yeah. is like a risky move. If, if it works, it works because if it doesn't, it doesn't. I think it's more because affinity markets are, or audiences are extremely large. So it's like if you hit the correct audience in the affinity audience, it works. If it, you don't, it doesn't. Yeah, they're just too wild. Like be careful when yeah. you use affinity audiences and try to think like this. Like um, let's say um, I don't have an example on my head right now, but just because somebody is in that affinity when, when there is a conversion doesn't mean that mm. that person is interested, right? Yes, those affinity mm-hmm. audiences are just too wild. Like, uh, for an example, that people who buy and I'll sell, like nine out yeah. of 10 people <laughs> will fit into that affinity audience. Like, that wouldn't mean your bikini is for everybody uh-huh. who likes to freaking the uh, buy and I'll sell. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, think, nice. I think that sums it up. Any, anything you'd like to add? No, I think that's it. Okay, I hope that Thanks. covers your question. Every, like, let that be time. an example. Like, you will be the you will be responsible for the next video if you have any questions, yeah. but not not uh, a single answer question. Like, I, I see other questions uh, in the comments. they like it needs to be one a topic answer. we're discussing. Yeah. yeah, that'll take us maybe like five minutes to talk through. That's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. If they're going to ask questions, we're not going to know the answer to now. Give us a challenge. That's better. Like that drives us. We, now we have to go yeah. find the answer and just show to uh-huh. them like we come up with the idea. We just. <laughs> yep. If it's too hard, we just ask John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Back to you, Kasim. Wait, before you go. I'm constantly looking for amazing people to come join our team. So if you're passionate about Google ads and you're passionate about customer success, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. And we'd love to see you as a part of the solutions 18. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that we actually know what we're doing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We shoot a video every single day and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Lastly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confessions, or you just hate my face and my voice, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We get very little human interaction, and even the heckling is something that I kind of get a kick out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribers if you're a subscriber. Don't forget to apply if you're interested in working at Solutions 8. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.